aluminate uh, fodder production and processing uh, it is very much clear that uh, fodder is very important uh, for the animals and major expenditure is over the fodder uh, say we are having very good breed if it is not fed uh, right proportion of the fodder uh, in terms of quantity and quality then we cannot uh, harvest uh, full potential of any animal uh, here it is important to mention that uh, along with the increase in any, uh, human population animal population in last uh, four or five decades increased simultaneously and we are the facing uh, the problem of uh, raising the uh, fodder for the animals at present uh, the uh, we are having sources of fodder crops that residues permanent pastures and uh, forest area and like that so at present forest demand and supply scenario is that uh, we are having the deficit of 11.24% green fodder and 23.4% uh, dry fodder and 24.78% uh, of feed and concentrate uh, the increase in population especially in arid areas or semi arid areas where the small ruminant population is higher than human population since uh, these small ruminants are the source of livelihood in the dry areas because in dry areas the crop failure is there and risk uh, is always involved so to overcome this situation the animals are only the helpful to us uh, for this such type of area that's why just like in rajasthan animal population is higher than human population under this scenario how we can cope up with this deficiency it is a very challenging task uh, for us uh, to harness the full potential of the animal major constraint in the fodder is that it cannot be transported because of uh, its voluminous in nature some states are having uh, surplus fodder some states are having deficient fodder uh, here uh, i am mentioning here that uh, up assam karnataka nagaland and kerala where percent deficient of green fodder is less than 25% but in case of jharkhand andhra pradesh tripura uttarakhand and jammu kashmir it is more than 50% and this himachal and madhya pradesh are having surplus green fodder uh, 25 50% and more than uh, 50% green fodder is sur surplus in the state of haryana punjab and mizoram similar situation is there in case of dry fodder but as i told it is very 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 difficult to transport because of what it's it is voluminous in nature so what to do under this scenario we will discuss on some strategies how to cope up with this problem as per present uh, production status we can say still we are uh, getting near about 55% product from the crop residue whatsoever crop we raise for our grain purpose then crop residue is available uh, for the fodder and that is 55% uh, we realize uh, on 18% as a grazing resources and green fodder production is under irrigated and benefit conditions contributes about 28% uh, crop residue annual crop residue production is 540 million tons and uh, cereal residue uh, among the cereal residue 70% of the total crop residue is of four crops rice wheat and maize and millets and out of this 34% is of rice crop which is of no use for our animal we are using the wheat crop residue which is 22% and other uh, maize and millets uh, residues Uh, total production of wheat straw in our country is 112 million tons and uh, in uh, some its states it is a problem and we are burning it in states like punjab and haryana uh, this especially rice and wheat
wheat residues. And these uh, such strong wheat paddy stores of sorghum are not being uh, properly utilized in many states because of uh, few reasons. Uh, major constraint uh, as I was discussing that uh, resource poor farmer is there is uh, unable to decide over parts over the land he is having uh, what portion is allocated to cultivate the fodder because because of farmers uh, are always in confusion uh, he is raising for his family livelihood or for the animal most of the farmers 65 percent animals uh, are reared in india by small and marginal farmers and their land holding is hardly one hectare or two hectare so this is a major constraint uh, there and limited cultivated fodder production uh, rain, most of the fodder are raised as a rain fed irrigation uh, resources are not sufficient and the what's over the community pasture uh, range lengths are there they are unmanaged over exploited and their area is declining day by day because of encro encroachment of the powerful persons and uh, uh, in panchayat, these are not properly managed. And uh, quality forest seeds are also a uh, constraint. Most of the time, these seeds are uh, unavailable to the farmers. As and when he wants to grow it, it is not uh, available to him. Uh, in few cases, some anti quality factors are there or inadequate pest and disease control in most of the fodder crops is there. And uh, poor public participation in uh, that uh, in managing uh, common pasture lands at village panchayats and it's it, etc. Like that. So, what should be the strategy for enhancing quality and quantity of this biomass? We uh, we have to adopt intensive forest protection system. Horizontal expansion of the land is over now. We have to increase per unit time per unit area, the production. Without this, uh, to cope up the deficiency, it is not possible. For this, we have to do intensive forest production system, overlapping cropping system, efficient fertilizer utilization, and judicious water use management. It is very precious one. Uh, in most of the cases, farmers are not having a sprinkler and drip irrigation and all these things, which can be used for raising the other trees and other things. So for judicious water management system, uh, government is giving the subsidy over on this is sprinkler irrigation system and drip irrigation system. But uh, many farmers are not uh, adopting this uh, practice of irrigation. So for judicious water use management, uh, it is must uh, to enhance the production and alternate land use system. Many lands are underutilized. We are having fellow uh, slopey degraded lands are there, salty, salt affected lands are there. These lands can be brought into fodder production. Exploiting available land resources. Uh, as I told these, uh, many lands uh, are underutilized, either in forest or in desert area. Now the new latest technologies, technologies are there to develop these lands. Uh, in any case, for, uh, for example, uh, converting salt affected lands at least for fodder production, which is not suitable for uh, raising the crop crops. So it should be treated scientifically at least for production of the forage management of or maintaining lean period for it fodder supply. You know, they, there are two lean periods uh, uh, in a year, November, December and May, June, when at that time, we are not in position to add proper uh, green fodder to the animals. And because of that, uh, their production uh, passed down. So in that period, what should be the strategy to feed the green fodder to the animals. Management of grazing resources. Uh, grazing resources are most of the time is over exploited. 
because of uh, higher animal population and limited uh, uh, land is uh, there for grazing as a community pasture land and like that and that these over exploited land should be reseeded with the improved grass uh, seeds and there should be a rotational grazing in, in that area to maintain the productivity of that grazing land for a longer period and in arid and semi arid area drought drought proofing strategy should be adopted so how we can maximize forest production for maximizing for uh, production first of all we should uh, have good uh, crop varieties and uh, of the grasses and fodder crops and it should be dual purpose that can serve our grain purpose as well as fodder purpose and it should be if it is green fodder it should be multi cut secondly and renovation and restoration of established pasture whatsoever pasture we are having it should be renovated because of over a time period of grazing uh, unwanted bushes and uh, unpalatable grasses are there due to the ecological disturbance or grazing so it should be renovated with the uh, improved seed grasses uh as i told for forest production from problematic soils unproductive slopey degraded and salt, salt affected lands Where, uh, these lands are not being uh, used for any purpose that can be uh, at least uh, brought to uh, brought for the forest production system uh, we have to adopt the agroforestry system as a silvic pasture and horti pasture in most of the cases uh, farmers are not uh, farmers are not growing tree not emphasizing on tree plantation in these days in agroforestry silviculture and horticulture system we can introduce fodder trees in the field we have a quite long experience of grazing the, uh, adopting this uh, system at cswri avikanagar Uh, in this two tier system three tier system is there two uh, in three tier system we are having fodder tree as a, at the top story and fodder bushes at middle story and at ground cover we can grow our arable cross for grain purpose as well as for fodder purpose and to enhancing the income of the farmers we can also introduce fruit tree in that field that is uh, horti pasture where pastures are there to increase the income from that land we can introduce fruit tree also there so in that way this uh, vertical increase in the productivity can can meet out the deficit in the fodder uh, next is uh, irrigation and fertilizer management so it is uh, it varying person to person and these resources are resources are quite dependent on the financial status of a farmer but whatsoever the facilities government is providing we have to avail it just for i told that uh, in drip irrigation subsidy is 75% and in sprinkler irrigation irrigation 50 to 7 50 to 70% in different states are there so we have to avail the facility and use the water judiciously and manage them for fertilizer management we should go for the soil testing without soil testing it is difficult to decide over what what proportion what amount of the fertilizer should be given in most of the cases we are giving the surplus for uh, as it is well known that for when we are growing the green fodders Uh, we are using judiciously this uh, nitrogenous fertilizer so only soil testing can decide what amount is required for production uh, of any fodder crop in the field so it, it should be managed well and uh, expanding promising alternative forage biomass resources like cactus azolla and oak betel uh, you know that uh, in summer most of the animals uh, that sheep and goat suffers from dehydration and other things so cactus is a good alternative because 
it is having a, about 90% moisture in that one. Three types of cactus are there uh, in the field. In most of the cases, 95% is spiny cactus. Somewhere is semi-spiny, some, uh, somewhere is spineless cactus. Cactus is there. Spiny cactus can also be fed easily by burning the these, uh, spines. Uh, though there, there may be reduction of 2 to 3% of moisture, but it can be utilized because it is there in uh, more quantity, 95% spine cactus is there. So advantage of feeding the cactus is that uh, first is gut filling, and second is it is it, it will not allow dehydration. The animal uh, will uh, will not feel thirst in summer days. That is the major advantage. Secondly, this azola uh, azola production uh, is quite high in limited quantity of irrigation water, but. It, it is it, uh, it is cannot uh, it cannot be fed uh, as a sole feed or as a sole green fodder. Uh, uh, it, it is incorporated little bit in the green fodder. It acts as a prickle for the animal. For dry areas, there are lot of wood cattle in the uncultivated, unproductive lands that can be used. Uh, or fodder in the same manner as in case of cactus. I was also discussing the fodder scarcity management. So fodder scarcity is there in November then December and in, in the summer month May and June. So as regard whatsoever resources we are having in November and December, uh, we face the problem of our green fodder because we go for the sowing of lucerne and bursine in the field condition, uh, the first cut uh, will come after 40 to 45 days. In these days, it is very, uh, no green fodder is there. So to recoup that one, we have to rely on the stock feed resources. As I was discussing about the agroforestry, we have to incorporate for the tree shrubs, that plantation in the field along with the arable crops. So this is the only solution. At that time, we can lob uh, uh, leaves of the fodder trees and can fed to the animals. So, and lobbing should be scientific. It varies from area to area and species to species, say for example, in case of Urdu. In most of the cases, when we go for the lobbing, we leave one third portion of, of the tree and two third is locked. But in case of Urdu, it should be locked 100%. And it can be locked twice a year. Then it will give very high production. We have conducted experiment. If we if we leave one third, uh, unlock the Urdu and uh, only one sloping, then its production dropped down uh, about 50%. So the loping should be scientific and it is uh, varying with area to area and species to species. In case of neem, it is being done on bubble, it is being done only once in a year. So profit resources are good strategy for water scarcity period, especially of green fodder. Then forage conservation things are there. Hey, we should conserve the for it, uh, when it is in ample quantity, when uh, their production is quite high, at that time, either we can conserve it as a hay or as a silage. In Kharif season, in rainy, we can say in rainy season, uh, very high production of many, we can say for the plants is there, and but it is very difficult uh, to conserve as a hay because of uh, high humidity and uncertainty of the rainfall. We can, we can, we have to cut and make it dry for making the hay, but we are uncertain uh, when the rainfall will be there. So it may spoil unless and until we are having the hay sheds where we can 
protect uh, from the unexpected rain, then we can go for the hay making. But in case of silage making, it is easier one. Uh, we can go for the silage making with uh, very nutritious weeds, other crop plants. Silage making is not that much challenging as a hay making. Next is uh, storage and transport. We have to create uh, some fodder banks and seed banks. Uh, major constant of the fodder is uh, availability of the seed. So we have to create uh, seed banks and fodder banks. And demand driven transport of the processed fodder. We can go for uh, processing of the fodder in, in order to reduce the volume. Uh, we can go for compressed uh, blocks of the fodder in case of uh, very famine conditions, in case of very high demand conditions, and that can be transported easily. Uh, seasonal transport uh, or in deficient area can be done, especially in hilly areas and arid areas where the demands of the uh, fodder under famine conditions is quite high. And uh, that uh, fodder processing and utilization technique should be adopted as belling, chaffing, uh, pellet making, log making, and one important is fortification and enrichment. It may be, it is generally being done for the micronutrients. Biofortification of crop should be there. A different area are having different. Uh, types of micronutrient deficiency and because of that deficiency fodder is also deficient in that particular uh, nutrient and due to that health of the animal its production affected adversely. So we have to consult nearby cavities, universities, uh, what type of deficiency is there in our area. For that uh, overcoming that deficiency we can go for biofortification by spraying that particular chemical on fodder crops at the time of raising that. Otherwise, we have to develop area specific mineral mixture, which should be given every day to the farmer, to the animals. So, in that way, we can manage this uh, scarcity of fodder uh, and uh, we can increase the production of the animal. Say, most important is this, uh, most of the animals graze on community pasture land. It should be developed in a proper way. Uh, what efforts should be done and what agencies should be involved, it should be kept in mind. First is protection, means uh, protection of uh, uh, that area is must uh, and it is very costly venture with changing fencing. So we have to go for, uh, with the uh, trench. It is uh, it is done by JCB easily and it is economical as compared to changing fencing. Second is reseeding with the improved grasses as I earlier discussed and grazing management, rotational grazing. Suppose we are having 50 acres of a land or 50 land, uh, hectares of the land we should divide into four, uh, four to five compartment, at least five compartment, uh, 10 hectare, 10 hectare, and 10 hectare. And we go for rotational grazing in every compartment. It will give chance to regrow the things and maintain the productivity of that uh, community pasture for a longer period. And establishment of top fits. At, uh, in that pasture, we can introduce uh, older trees and bushes. And we have to involve these agencies, village panchayat, sarpanch, and all the things, NGOs. And uh, in summer times, uh, we can go for bush cleaning and other things through Manrega types of uh, plan of the government. And we have to consult KVKs and universities for soil nutrient deficiency, for, uh, for soil nutrient deficiencies. and. Uh, types of for the trees and bushes of that particular area, uh, state agriculture universities, 
and uh, NSC and State Seed Corporation should also enroll because of availability of the improved seed is a major constraint. So we have to involve this agency also for community pasture development. In further slides, uh, I will show only this: uh, what are what types of the major fodder crops and why, what is their potential yield is there. So first is bajra. It is quite common in semi-arid and dry areas, and its its yield can reach up to 27 tons per hectare. That sorghum, its annual uh, if we harvest as a green fodder, its yield is 20 tons per uh, per hectare. And it may reach up to the 75 ton per hectare, depending on the availability of the irrigation water and fertilizer management conditions. And it should be harvested when it is 80 centimeter height, its quality is the best one. It should be uh, harvested at that uh, height and uh, can be conserved as a hay. Cowpea is the most common and leguminous uh, fodder uh, crop is. Uh, there and it's uh, it can it can yield up to the eight ton per hectare in irrigated area. Otherwise, it's uh, it's it's range from uh, 0.5 to 4 ton dry metal under normal conditions. Guar is uh, quite suitable for uh, arid and semi-arid areas and at high rainfall area, this crop is not yielding much more. It, there is general trend failure is there in case of high rainfall area and where the black cotton soils are there, stagnation of the water is a problem. It is a good suitable for well drained soils and uh, arid and semi-arid area areas. And its yield potential is 45 ton as a green fodder uh, in fit conditions. And uh, besides this, we also can get six to nine ton of green ports that can also be fed to the small ruminants. Lusan is the most common for the rabi season uh, as a green fodder and uh, its yield potential uh, is 80 to 100 tons per hectare. And if these ruminants, sheep and goat benefited in two ways. One is high protein and second is readily digestible. Its digestibility is uh, near about 75 to 80 percent and uh, its fiber is very valuable it is uh, rapidly digested in the woman so for this especially sheep and goat it is quite good green fodder which is raised in the rabies horse is a quite good fodder in uh, those farmers who are having the irrigated area can raise this crop very easily in its crop protein is 10 to 12 percent and uh, as a green crop it can supply about, about 25 tons per hectare green fodder from the first cut and this uh, if you go for this uh, seed harvest it can be a give up to 2 to 2.5 tons of uh, per hectare for dry areas Sankras grass as a dry fodder. This is the developed grass. Uh, this is two types, Sankras ciliaris and Sankras sedigerous. And both are hardy one and are good yielder. Once established properly at any field can sustain for over a longer period, eight to, 12, eight to 10 years. Uh, if it is renovated after six years, it's maintained for a longer time. And Annual dry matter production is uh, 2.5 to 10 tons per hectare, depending on the rate of fertilization and types of soil. In completely sandy soils, its uh, production is uh, less, near about 2.5 tons, but in sandy loam or high car organic carbon content soils, its production is also high, that is about 10 tons per hectare. And, uh, the most peculiar uh, thing is with this uh, grass is it can sustain heavy grazing. It is a uh, grazing resistant. Its clump is so uh, powerful to anchor the soil, uh, grazing will not affect its uh, next year growth. So it, uh, it is quite palatable, 
palatable also and readily accepted by these two animals, small ruminants, you can do that. A Siberian Napier, it is quite common. Those farmers who are having good irrigation resources can harvest uh, uh, high tonnage of green fodder in five to six cutting a year and its production potential is uh, uh, up to 200 tons per hectare. It is having crude protein 9 to 12 percent but it should not be fed alone. And it should be always fed to the animals with the legumes or concentrate or oil cakes. Its crude fiber is 20, uh, 26 to 80, at, uh, 28% and since its digestibility is uh, uh, lower than other green fodder like uh, Rusan and Barsing, that's why it should be fed with the legumes. Its improved varieties uh, are this CO3, PMB2, P3 and CO4 and nowadays many other improved varieties are there in the market. These are the slides for this, that well developed centrist pasture is there. And uh, this pasture, if you want to improve the quality of this pasture, we have to incorporate the strips of the legumes uh, of cultivated crops. Or the, otherwise, in case when uh, this, this slide is for uh, for the crops and these legumes, alternate alternate uh, strip cropping system. It is for the quality fodder. For the pasture, we have to introduce perennial legumes like uh, Stylosanthus ameta, Atylosia, Clitoria. These are some uh, few, five or six perennial legumes are there. If they are incorporated in the pasture, because in cereals, you know, protein content is only 4 to 7 percent in grasses. When animals are fed solely these grasses, then we have to give supplement for getting the good production from the animal. So, to, to increase the quality of that fodder, we have to introduce, incorporate these perennial legumes like stylo, center semata, uh, Many other uh, perennial legumes are there. So when these are cut with these grasses or grazed with these grasses, need not to give supplement to the animal because of the quality uh, and the protein content reaches up to the 10%. So when I was discussing agroforestry, this is the single tire open field only the crops are there. This is two tire agroforestry system. Crop is there and tree is there. This is two tire system and this is three tire system, agroforestry. The crop is there in between two fodder tree, fodder bush is there. And at ground story, this crop is there. So this is the seed grazing at CSWRI in three tire agroforestry system. As I, was, I was discussing horti pasture. This aula is incorporated in the same pasture. This owl and groundnut in crops also. The groundnut um, is very good for the for the uh, animals and quite acceptable and palatable. This animals. This bear and guar. Uh, bear that Gigifus mule area is quite palatable and realized uh, released by these two animals, this sheep and goat. That is called when dry leaves are called pala. That dry leaves of this bear is called pala. After harvesting of this fruit, uh, small tiny fruits from this bear plant, it is cut from the uh, ground level and dry leaves are harvested, which is very good fodder for the sheep and goat. And this is bear and ground. Uh, this is the two tire system uh, with uh, 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 other crops like moat and oats and this horti pastures or horti agroforestry system. Now we come to the round the year fodder production system. What uh, what fodder production system we have to adopt for green fodder for for getting the maximum green fodder 
maximum tons per year per year per hectare per year so these are the four five types of flow uh, sequences are there suitable to different areas climate and soil conditions one is napier bajra hybrid and caupian bursin it gives near about 260 tons the maize plus cowpea and with empichery in jazz season and cowpea bursin and japanese red it gives 197 and this uh, maximum is given by an uh, np uh, napier bajra hybrid plus cowpea and bursin and cowpea that is 255 tons per hectare per year here these are the fodder crops for different tracts of india different uh, climate type for arid area jowar bajra mod gowar and this cowpeas all right for the rain fed conditions and for the irrigated condition you can go for the lusam bursin and uh, in or in oat may jowar and bajra and similarly in semi arid uh, most of the crops are there uh, and Dunia grass, road grass, and this uh, Sankras cilieris, Sankras sedigerus. These crops, uh, these are the grasses. Hybrid Napier we can take in semi-arid region, but it cannot be grown in uh, arid regions. Uh, in semi-wet condition and wet conditions, uh, grasses are different. Dinanath grass is there. Uh, Velvet bean, rice bean, and cowpea, jowar, and sunnet is there. In semi-wet conditions, and we cannot go for lucerne, but we can go for persim and oats, Sudan grass hybrid napier, like that in this area. In wet regions, this dinanath uh, grass, rice bean, persim oats hybrid napier, dunia grass, gobia uh, sarso, hedge lucerne, makkan grass, with such type of. Uh, Newly introduced uh, fodder crops, we can take it wet regions, and in lower hills, uh, this jowar, cowpea, bajra, velvet bean, persim, lucerne, hybrid napier, and Sudan grass, road grass, like that. These are the, these are the crops and for different areas. Now we come to the fodder tree. In any fodder tree, the among the all the fodder trees, the ardu is the best one. Why it is best one? Uh, in previous slides, also told when we we were discussing about the limited uh, for them. It is the fastest growing tree. After planting uh, in soil, on in fifth year we can go for the lopping. No other trees there before eight to ten years give we can lop. But in case of ardu, we can lop it at the age of five year. Number one, number two is it can. Be locked fully, so when fully locking is there, it gives higher amount of green green foliage. In cat, it can be locked twice a year. If any other tree you you go for the locking twice a year, it will not it will be stunted. It will not grow further. It will not attain much more height. But in case of ardu, it is not there after two locking. Its growth is fast. And for animal point of view, higher amount of green fodder with high quality leaves means its protein content is 17 to 21 percent, and higher in calcium and phosphorus, which is good for mill production and uh, bone formation uh, for gaining the weight at early age for the kids of uh, sheep and goat. And uh, it is studied that. In case of sheep and goat, and it is said that it augments milk production also. So it is the best for the tree. If it is available higher in quantity, it can also be these leaves can also be tied for emergency period or for scarcity scarcity period. A fully grown tree can give up to 40 kg dry fodder per, uh, per tree. We can harvest the leaf of this this one like that. Other tree is uh, quite common and uh, is used uh, most of the roadside cropping 
its yield potential is, yield potential is uh, 30 to 35 kg dry powder and uh, its protein content is also high another one is kesli it is the pride of desert uh, it, uh, it is uh, giving good amount of uh, green fodder in quite hot days when temperature is more than 40 its leaves are more greener and its yield is good uh, these uh, dry leaves are called no or no and it contain, contains about 40 percent uh, protein and can be stored very easily to, to use it in drier season and uh, its cp is also very high it is uh, so 16 to 18 percent as compared to other qualities like green cereals and other things Leaves, this packard is the leaves is 40 to 40, 45 kg per uh, dry powder per adult tree and these are free of toxin and in fodder tree we should we should not have any toxins just like in uh, Eucenia lucasophila uh, that su bubble initially we were having uh, toxins mimosine so after feeding uh, uh, this uh, Eucenia lucasophila su bubble to the sheep wool shedding was there because of uh, anti nutritional factor mimosine when we talk about the uh, ardu it is having quite low tanning so any good fodder tree is should uh, have should be free from the toxins and low tannins and uh, its fruit protein is also 70 to 26 percent now babul in case of babul uh, it is mostly grown in dry areas and it is quite palatable in emergency cases uh, its pores are very good for the small ruminants in most of the cases when pores are fed to the animals those animals who are not uh, coming into heat they it is observed in the field conditions that they come into the heat after feeding the pores these pores are quite palatable and uh, quite relished by these sheep and goat and I was discussing about the Azola. So that Azola production, it, it, in when we talk about in terms of protein, uh, it gives four to five times higher protein ex of excellent quality as compared to Luzon and hybrid Napier. When we talk about in terms of protein, and in short period, it gives higher yield. After every eight to ten days or uh, 12 days you can harvest uh, this uh, azola since it takes less time to bloom and its production cost is very low and very uh, uh, low quantity of water is required to produce higher amount of the green fodder and it is hardly ready to harvest within a week uh, period uh, since its vegetative growth is quite high and uh, when we talk about uh, in terms of biomass production it is almost four to ten times uh, higher as compared to hybrid napier and lucent but the thing is that we cannot solely uh, feed it to the animals we have to feed uh, in lesser quantity with other green fodder uh, since it is quite rich in protein and uh, uh, it contains about 46 percent of the protein and responsible for rapid growth of the body mass in animal. so these are all about the fodder uh, resources moreover we are having uh, monsoon herbages which are very plenty in monsoon season i already discussed that hay silage making and uh, these other things uh, there are many processes are there. Why fodder conservation? It is there. Two glut seasons are there in August, September, and February and mid of March. We, in glut season, higher production, we can uh, take that production and conserve it to the uh, hay and silage form for the arrangement of the lean period. And uh, for maintaining good earth, it is must. Uh, 
these are the things and uh, are what probe are used for making the silage mostly this maize sorghum millets and hybrid napier oats and gunia grass are used for silage making i i want to discuss one thing that in silage making this is quite old technology but it is not popular in the farmers why it is there it is prepared in 60 days and as soon as the farmer start to use that silage as soon as, soon as he opens the silo the air enters in that one and after 3 to 4 days after entering the air the fungal infection is there in silage and every farmer is not prone to that one and that that spoiled silage when we feed to the animal uh, it uh, it falls ill or feel uneasy that's why that technology is not much more popular with the farmers so keeping this thing in view at cswra we we searched out the what should be the alternate uh, is feeding the uh, this uh, silage in animal is quite good and helpful in scarcity period uh, when green fodder is deficient so we started experiment and we uh, initially prepared in plastic bags but uh, it was costly and uh, uh, plastic bag generally punctured after one or two processes once or when used once and twice and that were costly and once punctured uh, air enter and anaerobic fermentation of for making silage uh, our goal is not uh, achieved as as desired and silage is not prepared in a proper way so then we shift our uh, attention on making it in plastic drums air tight plastic drums so we can prepare this silage in air tight plastic drums and in a plastic drum of different capacity that is 100 liter to 200 liter Uh, plastic drums can, uh, can be used for this purpose, and uh, as per our requirement, as we and, and as and when we want to open, we open it and we use for the animal and close it. The spoiling of the silage through uh, fungus fungal infection is not possible in that way. These uh, processes uh, uh, silage were prepared earlier in this below. There are many methods below ground. Uh, this one. in above uh, these silos are there but what i was discussing here in plastic drums we can we use this plastic bags also but uh, we are, we were not successful much more in this one because of uh, after one or two once once or twice uh, of its use it generally punctured and costing about 250 To sixty rupees per plastic bag, offer two fifty kg grit powder. So this one is quite good. This plastic drum. I have discussed this complete field block. Uh, for, it can be compressed. It can be incorporated with the uh, molasses and other micronutrients. Concentrated mixture we can mix uh, and then we can uh, make it a block. so we can add uh, vitamins and mineral minerals also uh, the advantage of making easy in transport and uh, feeding the animal with uh, good quality fodder one important aspect is that feeding uh, sheep uh, either whole or processed grain it is always advantageous to feed whole grain why it is that feeding feed intake may increase by 25% while feed utilization remains similar for all and collected grain growth uh, steady result that growth rate is up to 20% percent faster with whole grain and feed conversion efficiency is also good feed conversion is also improved up to 10% when we uh, feed whole grain and whole grain produce a firmer and more desirable fat finish on carcass and whole grain does not cause damage to the rumen uh, when feeding whole grain there is less uh, profitability of the off feed problem 
caused by acidosis in sheep and goat so it is there now last one production of green fodder as a hydroponic it is uh, quite common in foreign countries but in our india it is not be much more popular uh, because uh, we are not having technical knowledge our farmers are not having technical knowledge and uh, these are the sprouted cereal grain uh, of barley and uh, other uh, chari crops uh, we can grow in hydroponics uh, it requires some initial costly investment when we go for a large scale but for a small scale we can use plastic tray and we can go for uh, irrigating through hand rows can which we are using in gardening uh, locally we are trying to develop uh, such type of technology which can be adopted by uh, uh, poor farmers or small or marginal farmers but it is quite advantageous and it is a good example of judicious use of water for raising the green fodder so it is a quite good technique and we are now working on it uh, we are also trying to use the waste of these two animal sheep and goat like urine and manure both are containing higher uh, nitrogen content as compared to uh, other compost so uh, as a urine mixing in raising this hydroponic fodder there is no need to give additional nitrogen sources we are experimenting now on this aspect and hopefully this technology we try to make it farmers friendly thank you very much